Hey guys, welcome to Mars or Bust. I'm Spaceman Dave, and today we're going to take a look at how and where we're going to live on Mars, and then we're going to look a little bit at what we're going to do once we get there. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Please hit like and subscribe. It lets myself and YouTube know you're enjoying these videos. Okay, first thing is, why do we even want to colonize Mars? Is it just human curiosity? No, not that curiosity. It's actually more like this. This is part of it, but there's more to it than just that. The potential for the in-depth research a human can provide compared to that of a rover is enormous. Once we get there and learn to live on Mars, the resources we'll have access to will help with the settlement of other planets. And not to mention Elon's goal, the hope to decrease the chance of human extinction by spreading out the human race to multiple planets. So I don't think we have much option unless we just want to sit around and wait for the inevitable. Because cosmically, that's just a little nick. And it's happening every day somewhere in the universe. I'd really rather not be around for that one. So now we know why you're there. What's next? Okay, so we just landed on Mars and we just disembarked the ship. What happens now? Well, I lived for two years on and off on an oil rig, and I think it'll be very similar. So let's take a look. First, you're checked in. And then you're issued a cabin, and you take all your personal belongings to that cabin. I really doubt they'll have bell service. More than likely, this will be considered home for the duration of your stay. That is, unless by the time you get there, they have other facilities or unless you're willing to pay for it. Pretty much for the first day, it's learning do's and don'ts. Things like don't go outside without your space suit on, check your oxygen level before you leave, probably have the buddy system as well. Close the airlock door on your way out, don't stick your head in an alien egg. Common sense stuff, you know, but I wouldn't be surprised. If you have one bucket that holds two gallons, and another bucket that holds five gallons, how many buckets do you have? Two? Yeah, I hope it never gets that bad. We might as well just hang it up and pray for an asteroid. Next comes a tour of the facility and site-specific training. This will include evacuation procedures. And you have some idea what it's going to be like before you get there. But nothing is like actually being there. And trust me, safety is a big issue on an oil rig, so I bet it's a hundred times worse on Mars. And this definitely will be something you want to pay attention to, as your life will depend on it. And think about it this way. On an oil rig, if something goes wrong, you're about an hour to two hours away from help. You're pretty much on your own. But on Mars, you're three to six months away from any help. A lot of bad things can happen in that much time. Trust me, I saw the Alien series movies. One time you put your head where it doesn't belong and look what happens. On an oil rig, you have a lifeboat. 
which helps you get away from the problems. But on Mars, a lifeboat isn't going to do you a lot of good. Where are you going to go? Even if you got off the planet, there's nothing out there. Maybe by the time you get to go, there'll be some sort of a space station orbiting Mars. But there's only so much they're going to be able to do. And this is probably where the similarities of being on an oil rig end. Now that you got your cabin and you're situated, you can relax, have a beer, and contemplate where you're actually at. What type of facilities are you actually living in? Since we have to worry about the radiation issue on Mars, more than likely your facilities will be underground. And being that Elon Musk actually owns the boring company, my bet is that they'll have underground living facilities. Have you ever actually thought about that? Pretty much every one of Elon Musk's businesses is associated with something that will eventually be needed on Mars. There was no pre-planning there, was there? This here is the mob. These are my patrons. They're some amazing people. I truly appreciate your help and encouragement. I have no words to describe how happy I am you're part of the mob. Thank you so much, guys. And you too can join the mob for as little as $1 a month. Check it out in the description. Hey Elon, yeah, hey man, you gotta give me a call. I've got some really good ideas that we need to go over. You and I could probably make a little bit of spending money on a couple of these. It won't take too long. We could probably do it over a cup of coffee. Unless you don't drink coffee, you could always get a cup of Earl Grey.